doing the walk behind. You, you don't want to do the walk behind and wave to your, your family back home, but you do yeah. it anyway and you get yelled at by a security guard. Hey. What's up, Dad Hat Crew, and welcome to another episode of the Dad Hat Chronicles podcast. Now, this week, we are going to finish my conversation with Brian Wilson. He is the merchandise director with the Duran Bulls. On this episode, okay, we talked about baseball winter meetings. We talked about differences between certain brands that he uses to order merchandise, jerseys, things like that for not just the Duran Bulls, but also the Holly Spring Salamanders and that other thing team right the third team which now we know is the greenville yard gnomes right so there's three teams three different dynamics right because they're totally different teams right so we go into all of that and we discuss how he approaches it the people that he works with and again you know the baseball winter meetings as far as how what that entails right because there's two two different uh, winter meetings that took place in 2023, one in Vegas, one in Nashville, and which one it's more fan friendly, which one is not. So guys, so without further ado, I give you the episode. <laughs> You're like sleeping mom. I'll do it later. No, no, make it even more fun. On my off time, I'm, I'm actually a team manager of a youth hockey team. Jeez, man. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Shout out to the Raleigh Raptors. That's amazing though, because that's yep. that's fun. Like you're just coaching at that point, and it's uh, hockey. It's, hockey is so much fun to watch. Oh man, I have a eight year old playing. I have a, my thirteen year old plays. We go all over the southeast. You know, we we've been to Toronto last year to play. Ooh, that was real life hockey right there for a twelve year old going to Toronto to play. That's Ooh. different up there. That was that different. was different life. They learned really quick what hockey is. Man, wow. But it's, at the, you know, it's our spare time and our kids, we have three boys and all three played, you know, I had two that played baseball, one, all three played hockey. So it's just so much fun to get there, watch them go out and have fun. How would you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but like they're bringing this massive complex now, yeah. hockey complex. Oh, that's going to be man. huge. Yeah. For, from what I understand is four sheets. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's it's an a, Olympic size. I think it is. One of them's going to be Olympic, I believe. Yeah, uh, I don't know all the, but it's basically they're trying to bring or they are bringing a an academy. Yeah, they are with with but with hockey, it's all about juniors. The junior, you know, junior Hurricanes have a USP a a team along with their youth program. But yeah, that's going to not only that, but it's going to open up so much ice time in the Raleigh area. Rocky or uh, Raleigh. Raleigh is growing exponentially with with ice hockey, both male and female. Yeah. Like, for instance, uh, Saturday morning, I'll I'll be at the rink at six thirty with my eight year old, and then we're since we finish with that, my thirteen year old, we have to drive up to Roanoke to play for a weekend of games. But yeah, we're at the rink at six a.m. You know, sometimes till six p.m. I love it, but you wouldn't have it's it any awesome. other way. No, not any other way. And then baseball will start in March. I love it. So let me ask you, because we talked, you know, obviously when I, when I go to the store, I stop and say hi and we mm -hmm. talk, but you tell me that you, your relationship with other merchandise managers, right? Like, do you sit down and do you discuss those? So like, all right, you know, give them, like when you said you give them ideas and talk about your design and all that, you, mm -hmm. how is that? Like you guys share, do you go with people to like, you know, to meetings as far as merchandising uh, is concerned? How do you, how do you do that? Absolutely. So up until COVID every year at the baseball winter meetings, there would be a trade show, a giant right. trade show. And that's where we would do a lot of our buying for the, for the season. And most merch directors would be there. And I can tell you that I learned more about my job either at the trade show with other vendors and merch directors, or honestly, after sitting in the hotel lobby, talking to 10 or 12 every night. And I learned so much about what other people do and how I should not just be a merchandiser, but be a leader and be a manager to my team. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm up to a staff of 25. I have one full-time em employee, Emily, who is amazing. And then the rest are seasonal employees. 
And they, you know, I learned how to really treat employees well by talking to other merchandise directors and how they would have people stay for years and years and years because you just you treat them right doesn't necessarily have to always be pay but if you treat treat somebody with respect and and positive reinforcement they you know it, it just makes for a great working environment but then like we go back to the 47 where i would go up there there's most of the time it's a group of us so there'll be a group of three or four of us at the same time and we're all in the same conference room with these giant tvs you know and one has a mud hens hat one has a clippers hat one has a bulls hat and oh i like that how do you do that oh i like you know and we just sit there and you know basically just pick each other's brains about their product and what would you do craig craig what craig look at this look at this shirt what do you think should i change the logo should i change the color scheme and you get this this other input from not necessarily in your immediate team because believe it or not we all think we're the best absolutely uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely as you should but, right so you know getting that other input from an outside source who knows you know what you're trying to do it, you can't you can't replicate that and we're so blessed to be able to have such a great working environment with the other merch directors that will do that and it's not a competition it's a competition you know about you know because we're all on different teams and we mm -hmm. want to be the best but we want each other to do really well so yeah they're going to give you the ideas hey uh, hey this shirt's selling out for me you need to do this you you know this for instance the big one this year was the big fan chains mm -hmm. well i was at a trade show in january and we saw the fan chains and we got those licensed yeah. And only a couple of us did it. And we just sold sold those like hotcakes. <laughs> They're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. I love them. You go to every every uh sporting massive, event, like yeah, massive chain around the neck with the giant logo. And yep. that was a conversation with a couple other merch directors. Should we do this? And you're like, Yep, let's go ahead. Let's try it yeah. out. Now there's also been some duds that way too. It's not of always course. perfect. Yeah, there's been some great duds that I've been a part of. And you're like, oh, not anymore. Learn that <laughs> lesson. I did have someone ask me about that. Like, what what do you think doesn't work well? And I I try hard not to remember those things. It's getting easier. <laughs> it's getting easier with age. But it's really true. Like, if, if it's not working, get it out. Just do what you it. have to do to get it out of here. Don't let it be a part. You know, yeah, you missed it. You're going to miss something all the time. Get it out it goes. and and move on to something else that'll work better. But people ask me, well, what what didn't work? I don't know. I I I, I, got I don't ready. know because I I literally just erased it out of my uh, my, uh, exactly. my head on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> yes. Interesting. I love that. That's that's intriguing. That uh, you know because no one no one really asks you. It's like you know okay. So like, what goes good for you guys? What goes well? But like there's that's there's the other side of that. It's like you know mm -hmm. there's been some duds. There's some you know that that just doesn't work out so it, it happens it really it happens. does happen every year it happens there's a clearance rack for a reason and i and i will visit the the clearance rack i, will I do it. too i go to but, other stores i can't so do uh, i my wife makes fun of me so much because i just can't i can't do it i can't buy stuff for myself i will go to I the clearance store yeah just I'll, go I'll, to the clearance I'll, rack I'm i'm good there Yep, I'll be happy. I'm okay with this. Like, yep. is it on sale? Yes. Okay, then we can. Talk. I think it looks great on me. Yes, absolutely. And that's <laughs> how it goes. I tell my wife all the time. I'm not. I'm not. Buying, when it comes to clothing, full price, not gonna happen. Not happening. That's how not it happening. goes. But I don't want <laughs> exactly. I love it. Well, I I might will I will though you know get a Durham Bulls hoodie at full price just because there you gotta have a hoodie right like I mean that's just part of you the, gotta have a hoodie. You have to. And you have yep. some good ones. I'm looking at a 47 run right now, as a matter of fact, mm. uh, on your site. See, I literally you may, have your site on the right now. That is a great one. Wait till you see what's coming in in February. I cannot wait. Uh, the, the one thing that's really cool about, this, about you know, we do have to order so far in advance with a lot of mm -hmm. things. But then it's like you get it in after 10 months and it's oh man i forgot about how cool that looks <laughs> i was like oh yeah and, oh i can't oh yes i'm definitely taking that home today 
<laughs> your a lot of your gear like is it hard for you not to take gear with you because like you're like i'm mind getting this one too my first couple of years yeah it's gotten easier and easier it's, over the it's years it's gotten easier for me honestly it's more like oh i want to get that for my kid my kids gonna <laughs> love that or yeah. my wife's gonna love that or you know some i'll get this for my friends for me it's it, the closet's getting full <laughs> yeah i'm sure you have a lot of jerseys a lot of t-shirts yeah, you know, and a lot of staff polos, and I, I was love just it. gonna say the staff polos is what it, where is that? Love, I love it though. I, it's just a row, and I love every second of that. I love it's, wearing it's, polos. Mm-hmm. Love and polos love and khaki polos. shorts. That's what my wardrobe is. But you know, it's the uniform of tri- of minor league baseball. It is. It is. We we changed this year for the first time and had black shorts, and no one knew. For the ones that have been around a while, we didn't know what to do. We we're like, you know, we just have piles of khaki shorts. We're like, yeah. oh, we gotta go shopping. What is this about? Like, what is happening here? Yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Can I trade these in? I was like, do I have to? I mean, cause this is, I'm, <laughs> exactly. I'm a little comfortable. It was, it was an adjustment, but I was, I, I actually grew to love it. Really, and I did. First thing is, you spill stuff on black shorts. It's not bad. And then to go right back to the beginning, sports turfists or things you get that when you go out on the tarp doesn't show so much on black shorts. Yeah, and it doesn't come off. Also, it does. Yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I can't. I, I'm telling you. I, by the way, I really I'm not kidding though. I, you know, I will go there and work with you a full day. I will oh yeah, do this, this is happening. I, I'm going to write it on my board behind me here as soon as we're done. Ed, Ed is working a day shift. I love it. I'm I'm there like white on rice. You don't even know. So, Brian, is there anything that I have not asked you or uh, do you want to talk about it when it comes to this? Because like I said, I could talk, you know, hats. I could. T- so let me ask you this, because this is that like, so you work with 47, you work with new era. Does, yep. does, does that work? Is that different as far as like the design process with new era than it is with 47 or even OT sports? Yeah, it's it's really two entirely different frames of mind, really. Mm-hmm. Especially with the on field. The yeah. on field is the on field is a one whole category. Time frame is about the same, especially when you're talking with New Era is the official on field. Yeah. Uh, so anything we do with a special theme night hat that goes with one of our theme night jerseys, you're looking almost 18 months in advance now. Mm-hmm. We are really like we're looking at 25. Wow. This off season right now for headwear, we're looking at 25 to make sure it's ready to go for that season. 24 had to be done last off season. That's wild. They're, they're both great in working with the reps. The people that we work with at both companies are amazing. Mm -hmm. Nick, who's our, our guy for new era. I've known him for, you know, 12, 15 years. Do anything. If, If they can make it happen, they will. The biggest difference, I would say, it's not so much. It's they're both hats. They both have things that are similar, but it's a different style. Yeah. Oh, what? Totally. It's different. a totally different style. So people who are in certain things that New Era have are not the forty seven fan base so much. Yep. There's obviously inter- intermingle, but you know the the fifty nine fifty, the thirty nine thirty stretch fit. Those are those are totally different types of yep. of cap it's really it, it's a different fashion it's a different look your person who's looking specifically to wear on field mm-hmm. that is our new era our company and they're great for that ot sports they are our official jersey on field mm-hmm. uniform complete united just you complete uniform they do all of our replica uniforms they do a lot of our they're into apparel now they're not necessarily headwear. Outdoor Cap does a lot of headwear as well. OT is, I was there today, actually, at three o'clock. I was, I've been there twice this week. They're over in Burlington. The great thing about them, not only is their customer service phenomenal, their product is amazing. Their on-field product is great. Their replica jerseys are, are basically the authentic jerseys, just a different cut. Mm-hmm. Made in the USA. Yep. Made in North Carolina. Yeah, right oh, there in Burlington. Even, yeah. Which right there in, Bur- in Burlington. So if there's things we need that are a little more rushed, then you know we can get them. For us, that's great. But they take care of the people in you know the Northeast just as much as they take care of the Durham Bulls. They are the official Durham Bulls ballpark corner store. 
sponsor now and they're great to work with but that's amazing um, outdoor cap is again they're a great vendor we also use zephyr yeah they're the official for the coastal plain league is zephyr and yep. then we all you know there's nike we can get a little for the nice thing about cpl we're a little more open what we can use right now so you know we used to be able to use nike a headwear we can't really anymore at least not yet a lot of changes I think are coming on vendor sides, but yeah, the big three for us, Ben Ritter also has headwear and they're able to get it to us very, very quickly. They saved us really in 21 when nobody could get things back. They could, they saved that's, a lot of teams from having very empty head walls. That's, and that's a key, right? I can't, because you know, 47 at one point was so backed up, new era yep. was so backed up. And so you have these companies, right? OT Sports, Ben Ritter, right? They're like, all right, well, we'll hang it out. Well, let's do yep. this. Zephyr, same thing. I was like, you know, like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll help out. Let's, let's, you know, let's talk. I, I was very surprised. They're a great hat. Oh, um, yeah. When I, I didn't realize I went to, uh, for a hockey tournament, we went to Nashville and my son wanted to go to a, the store and predators want to get a hat. Their whole hat wall was Zephyr. I was, oh, that's pretty cool. Two days later, I'm in uh, Las Vegas for the baseball fall meetings. We go to the Vegas Golden Knights game and the exact same thing. They're, they're all Zephyr. I was like, mm -hmm. Okay. This, these are top notch hats here. They're, they yeah, they're, they're making a yeah. come up. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they are. Let me ask you, because you said something that I want to touch on, because now baseball meetings, and then we'll go into my famous, not so famous mm -hmm. questions, I promise. But <laughs> with the 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 baseball winter meetings and fall meetings are totally different. Totally different. Interesting. It, I, the fall meetings are what's very similar to what used to be the minor league baseball promotional seminar. Mm -hmm. Very similar to that. There's no more trade show, at least not at this point. Right. OT Sports when that happened, started regional, small regional trade shows. We actually hosted one where they go around the country, do about five or six, and you bring about 15 teams into your stadium mm -hmm. and you do basically a fast with 10 to 12 vendors. But there's no big trade show for us anymore. The winter meetings, which used to be both major league and minor league, everybody, it's a lot less minor league. It's just meetings, you know, league meetings for the executives. And that's about it. No, so it, it's just a toned down one. And that just happened after COVID. Mm -hmm. I miss it. I miss yeah. it for a lot of reasons. The trade show, the camaraderie with the minor league teams, getting to be with the major league teams. I don't know if you've ever been to the winter meetings. But I've been trying to get to one. I was, I, I was, almost went this year, but I was like, I couldn't just. It's be so, it was so cool because you'd walk into these giant hotels like in Nashville and every Sports Center would have a setup and baseball MLB network would have a setup and Fox Sports would, you know, and all these famous people that you never see are just walking around, players, GMs, just walking around and and you can be a little bit of a fan, not too much, but a little bit of a fan, like oh mm -hmm. Tony LaRusse is right there. That's so cool. And get to meet a lot of the major league people you work you, you know, you work with via email or things like that. I miss that part of it. And hang out with the vendors for four days. We would also have a business seminar. And that was the free seminars where we would all have different topics. Merchandise was great because we'd all do seminars and different then different merch directors would would host seminars. And not only were they great to get some ideas, they were great for new merch directors to learn the not just the basics, but to to learn what other people are doing. And like I said, I learned so much those first couple of years on what to do and what not to do. And we miss those. I hope that comes back someday. So do I. I, I. I literally, I'm telling you, I almost went this year. Next year, I told my wife, I'm like, listen, I have some serious like fear of missing out right now. Like I'm, I'm watching Major <laughs> League, you know, network. And I'm like, I, I want to be there right now. Yep. But what's I, the uh... difference? What was the difference between Nashville and, and Vegas then? You know, because that's those were two totally different. Totally uh, different. The, the one in Vegas was more like what the winter meetings used to be for us. Okay. A lot of seminars, best practices, okay, things like that. Less um, fanfare. Yeah, less. More about the business of baseball versus the business of baseball players. Okay. 
and then obviously the league meetings and the winter meetings. But for us, that was more best practices, seminars with your colleagues. Mm-hmm. And that was great. So that was that brought back half of it, you know, mm-hmm. like where you can learn. Now we just got to get a trade show and yeah. we'll be back to normal. I love it. So let's say that someone like myself or a fan wants to go. Your suggestion would be like the actual like what happened in, in Nashville. Yeah, it, it it's a lot more closed off. Mm-hmm. Um, at least it used to be like fan. You would see fans walking around the hotels and stuff. But mm-hmm. as far as the, you know, the ones they're looking for, you didn't see them. You know, you didn't see a lot of players very much. You, you know, you'd see managers a little bit and GMs, but they're kind of closed off to themselves. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when they would be doing the interviews and things like that on the on the uh, TV decks, that was the best part. I love it. Doing doing the walk behind. You, you don't want to do the walk behind and wave to your, your family back home, but you do yeah. it anyway and you get yelled at by a security guard. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm going to do it nah, anyway. I, I got away with it. Yep. I'm here. Sorry. My bad. My, oops, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> not sorry. See, didn't see that live cam. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that light supposed to mean that I was not supposed to walk by? <laughs> oh. Oh, I'll I'll remember the next time. Sorry. I won't do that again <laughs> next year. I love it. All right, my friend. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Would you rather be at the beach or mountain? Mountain. Love it. I'm redheaded, man. <laughs> can't, can't get too much of the sun. <laughs> uh uh, if you go to the park, right? Let's say you go in as a fan, right? Yep. As a fan, what is your food and drink of choice? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Well, no. Definitely a hot dog guy. Good man. Good man. Definitely a hot dog guy. Are we talking beers here? Sure. Let's go for it. Uh Blue Moon. Oh, I just had one tonight for dinner before I get here. I'm, I'm gonna get for- made fun of by my hockey coaches because they're all like crafty beer guys and they make fun of me. Of course. Or if I go home to Rochester, I get myself a Rohrbach. Blueberry. Ooh, blueberry. Oh, it's good. It's good. Interesting. Okay. That sounds delicious. And then you got to throw, you got to throw fries in there. And you always do. I just had a pretzel. Shout out to the uh, food and bev here at the DBAP. They're, they're top notch guys. I love it. (laughs) If you could have any wild animal as a pet, what would it be? Penguin. Wow. There was no hesitation there. No hesitation. No hesitation. That, I like it. That's Emperor cool Penguin. Move. Done. Okay. Favorite cereal as a kid? Crunch Berries. Ooh. That's so good. Followed, followed closely with the underrated Cocoa Krispies. Really? A Cocoa Krispies guy, huh? Man, turns it into chocolate milk at the end. It, who doesn't like chocolate milk? There you go. I like it. Worst song ever. Worst song ever. Oh, yes, let's. Oh, can we pass on that one? Absolutely. I'll come back to it. I'll come um, back to it. Just got to give me a second. You, what was your favorite school subject? Social studies. Interesting. Mine was. So it, I was going to be. Uh, I was going to be a social studies teacher. In, okay. There You're you like. I'm glad I wasn't, but you know that's what <laughs> yep. it was. Yep. <laughs> let's see here. Pick one. Going bungee jumping or skydiving? Bungee jumping. Yeah? Yeah. Like at least there's something that's that right there. Uh I think I'd be I would skydiving would is they're very close, but I think bungee jumping, that whole getting down and going that that split second of uh oh and go right back up. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna hit that. Nope, never mind. I'm going right back up. Never mind. Here we go. <laughs> uh if you can be in any movie, any movie. What movie would it be? Star Wars. Bro, you are Empire. You and me right here. Empire. I'm a, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah, I I am the I am the resident Durham Bulls Star Wars nerd. You're that's a good that's a good title to have. That is yeah. a good title to have. I I also build Lego so I have all of those helmets. The Yo, Star yeah. Wars Lego helmets. I have yep. them all right here. Nice. Yes. So uh, my favorite time of the year is when we start designing the uh, Star Wars uniforms. So I got it. I'm getting one this year. I'm going to get one this year. A Star okay. Wars. Theme. I'll hold one off for you. Yeah, let's do this. If you could right. uh, be any fictional character, any fictional character, character, who would it be? Fictional character. Yep. 
All right. Give me a, you know what? Oh, Tom Clancy books. Jack Ryan. Oh, have you watched the ones on Amazon? No. You I should. I work here so much. I don't get to watch a lot of TV. I'm telling you, if you ever have a chance, I bet you don't. But get into those. Get into the the Jack Ryan shows on. You know, they're all there. The seasons, they're great. Okay, really good. I, I'm in. That's my homework. Have you ever regifted a gift? Yes, that's what white yeah. elephants are for. That's right. Absolutely. All right. The last question that I'm going to do here is a baseball trivia. So far, the two people that I've asked since I started doing this are O and Forever. So they have not. Uh, you know, so oh and oh, two. Oh, hey, can I change the uh, worst song ever to most overrated band ever? Absolutely. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cause a ruckus here. I like it. Nirvana. Not a fan. Never been a fan of Nirvana. I was, I'm with you there. A uh, huge Dave Grohl fan. Foo Fighters for life. Mm-hmm. I'm um, with you there. Nirvana's overrated. You and me, my friend. You and me. There we go. Okay. And then, so, so, so here's the question. Okay. It's a, it's a trivia question. It's a baseball trivia question about these, this pack of Marshalls, no right. TJ Maxx. And then I was okay. like, oh, I'm going to use it. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Who was the last manager of the Montreal Expos and the first manager of the Washington Nationals? Oh man. Oh, I can picture him. <laughs> I'm not gonna get it. I'll, I'll I won't waste your time, but I, I I can picture in my head Frank Robinson. You knew it too, right? <laughs> That's how it always goes. Oh, if this has been a good series to add to my podcast, it's been this great. is really good. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna be mad at myself for that one. Yep. So yep, last manager of the Expos, first manager of the Nationals, Frank yeah. Robinson. Man. Uh Brian, I, I've had an absolute blast, my friend. Thank you so much for doing this. Where can people find you, the team, uh, on the socials? Uh, obviously, you can go to our Durham Bulls, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Our social media is best in baseball. They're good. Absolute They're great. Best. Shout out to Greeny. Great. They are awesome. www.durhambulls.com slash shop. Come get any of your merch. We're still shipping. We're going to ship right till December 23rd or come out to the ballpark corner store. Uh, we're going to be here not only 11 to 5 every day, but during Woolies Winter Wonderland. Yeah, and, you uh, are. Definitely come out to see that through the end of the year. It, it is a lot of fun. You can go tubing in center field, go ride the train around, around the ballpark. Things you never thought you would do, but you can do when you... You do here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. That's amazing. And I, I highly recommend the hot chocolate. It is phenomenal. I will be there Saturday. I, I We bought tickets to go there. My daughter's uh, been looking forward to the uh, tubing. So we're very excited for that. We're very excited. Uh, it is well worth it. It is a lot, a little more uh, steep than you think it is. <laughs> and uh, you get some speed going pretty quick. I like it. Love it. Love it. All right. Hey, Brian, we'll stay in touch again. Uh, but thank you for doing this, my friend. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great holiday. You as well. Thanks. Hope you guys enjoy that episode with Brian. Now, make sure that please, 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 please follow him on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever he's at. I put all this stuff in the in the description. Don't you worry. All you have to do is just click on it and, and then do that. Okay. But also follow the Durham Bulls, the Holly Springs Salamanders, the Greenville Yardinals. Follow all of them, right? Everything is, uh, is on the descriptions. And then, you know, guys, you guys... Each team is different, right? You got the CPL, and then you also have minor league baseball. They all, they're all different, right? But they're all cool. Why? Because it's baseball, right? So I hope you guys learned some cool things from Brian. Uh, I'm gonna try to get you guys more, more people like Brian that are giving us some good insight into what it's like to work in minor league baseball. All right. Uh, and uh, also make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. Uh, yes, even TikTok, you know, uh, threads, all of that. Uh, that way uh, you guys are always in the know when something is dropping. My YouTube channel, right? I'm putting a new video every day. That's right. Every day. We'll see how long I can keep this up. But so far, the whole month of January, I was golden. February, I'm pretty good. I'm putting one every day. All right. All right. Now that I get all that crap out of the way. Let's get you guys that um, that joke of the episode, and here it is. Why did the boy bring a ladder to a chorus? 
he wanted to sing higher. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll see myself out, guys. And until then, please keep grinding and always support my legs. See ya. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna Tomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey everyone, it's Eric from the great state of Kansas. This is Johnny from the New Orleans Baby Cakes Memorial Museum. And we are the Earn Fun Average Podcast. Where we talk to a variety of guests about their love of baseball and have fun doing it. America, lower your standards. Average is what we do best. This is Patrick. And Corey. Oh, BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at CurveBrimMedia.com.